Tips from Trestle is brought to you by eMenu Choice Point of Sale and Clark Food Service Equipment. Welcome to Tips from Trestle, the Senior Living Food and Hospitality Podcast. This podcast explores the senior living industry with a unique focus on food, hospitality, and the community experience. I'm your host, Aaron Fish. My goal for this podcast, educate, inform, and inspire leaders in senior living. How? By bringing the resident and customer experience to the front of mind in our industry. We should bring the passionate spirit of food and hospitality to everything that we do and everyone we serve each and every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Joining me today on Tips from Trestle is Akshita Iyer. Akshita is the CEO and founder of OWN, a technology company that built the world's first smart stove knob to make cooking easier, safer, and more enjoyable. After a serious incident with her mother in a kitchen fire, she started her mission to develop a solution. Akshita assembled a team of talented engineers and designers, appeared on Shark Tank, and raised $3 million in venture capital and launched the OWN smart knob the only smart device that can retrofit to your existing stove in minutes so you can monitor and control your burners from anywhere, anytime. Akshita, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. Thanks so much for having me, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this because I feel like your device has such a use and such a value to the senior living space. And I wanted to learn more about it. So First, can you just give us a little bit of your background and how you even came up with this idea for, for the smart knob? Yeah, so it's been a bit unconventional. I never expected to know so much about kitchen appliances, never wanted to know so much about kitchen appliances. I actually went to school for neuroscience and thought I was going to be a doctor my whole life. And then uh, I took a few gap years after I graduated just to get some work experience, make sure that medicine was really what I wanted to do. And it just so happened that in that time, I started watching a lot of Shark Tank coincidentally <laughs> and got very inspired. But my mom, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's just a few years before this, left the stove on one too many times and started a kitchen fire. And so it was a reality check on many levels for me that one, my mom's life is changing, right? And the things that she used to be able to do are becoming more challenging. Number two was my parents are getting older. My dad's actually up 10 years older than my mom. And so, you know, they don't plan on leaving their house anytime soon. And yeah. so even though we were early adopters of almost every smart technology that you could think of, I really didn't find anything in the kitchen. So I went down a rabbit hole of why is the kitchen so far behind and realized that it's a hard industry, right? Because appliances last 10, 15, 20 years. Right. People only really buy a new appliance if they build a new house or there's breaks. So I just really saw an opportunity. Like if we already retrofit almost every other smart technology in our homes, right? Door locks, thermostats, baby cameras. So why can't we use that as a way to bring technology to the kitchen today with the ultimate goal of, yes, we could integrate everything, but there is like tens of millions of households today that are that could use this technology. And so I was like, how hard could it possibly be to build a connected device? It can't be that challenging. I didn't know <laughs> what I didn't know. And I'm glad I didn't know what I didn't know. And just kind of dove headfirst and not realizing that it would actually um, turn into a business. It was really just something I wanted for my own parents. But then after getting on Shark Tank, after hearing from so many people about how impactful this could be at a larger scale, I had to figure out how to build a business. And so off I went and haven't looked back. Since. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think all of us entrepreneurs are kind of like that. Like we don't know what we don't know. And so we just mm -hmm. start in head first and it's a kind of a figure it out on your own, on your way uh, along. And so, yeah. but I'm intrigued by the idea that this retrofits, right? It's, you know, I, I think about like a, a next ther thermostat versus like yep. the old thermostats. I mean, that's kind of a, you're swapping it out, but it uses kind of the existing wiring kind of a thing but working with a conventional stove is definitely different and so i'm curious to how to understand how the, the smart knob works and kind yeah. of what the benefits are for someone who might want to be aging in place or living in a senior living community with with a kitchenette yeah absolutely so a smart knob works just like a regular stove knob you mentioned this retrofit that we already have with thermostats and blocks and 
we went the retrofit route largely because adoption is so much more feasible and intuitive and requires minimal customer education, right? So we really, really prioritize making sure that we're not changing how people cook. You use your, your stove like you do every day. You push, you turn. The only difference is that this knob is Wi-Fi connected and it has a motor built in. So it can automatically and proactively control each burner based on what's happening in your kitchen. So you take your knob off, you put our knob on, and we have features like an automatic shutoff that will detect that you've left the stove on for too long. It'll automatically turn it off. We also have a safety lock where if you want to lock the knobs, whether you have kids or <laughs> whether you are aging, right? And, and you want to make sure that, you know, someone who might get up in the middle of the night, not realizing that, you know, they turn a burner on, you can actually lock the stove. But then we also connect with your voice assistants. So you can set cooking timers. You can remotely control the burner. So it's not just about safety and making sure that we're mitigating the number one cause of house fires, which is leaving the stove on, but it's also about how can we drive some more efficiency and convenience, especially for older adults like my mom, who maybe cannot move as quickly, right? And so, right. you know, can you, if you know you're making rice, it always takes 15 minutes, right? But you yeah. get distracted. So we allow you no. to just set a burner timer for 15 minutes. And so you don't even have to be in the kitchen. If when that goes off, we will make sure that the stove turns off or the burner turns off when you need to. So those are our core features. And as we look at senior living applications, what started to happen as we were just um, selling direct to consumer was a lot of our customers were buying this for their family members, right? So yeah. aunts and uncle who live, you know, a thousand miles away, they were going and installing this for them on vacation. And so I saw people were buying multiple sets. So I was like, wait, why? people usually have one stove. Why do you need another one? <laughs> and so when I found that out, I said, hey, you know, we need to look at other distribution channels. So what if we could go to senior living communities, right? Multi-unit buildings where the incidence of cooking related fires is actually a lot higher. So 74% of multifamily residential fires are caused by unattended cooking. So there's a risk mitigation piece. But what's really interesting is that we're now able to look beyond the appliance, right? So we are getting data every day about how often people cook, what time of day they cook, how long they're cooking for, how often is the auto shut off engaging and what we're doing for these communities, specifically for the facilities managers, for caregivers and family members is actually tracking that daily usage and building a resident profile around cooking patterns so that we can detect if there's an anomaly, right? So I know mom cooks every morning and all of a sudden for three days she hasn't cooked. Right. So that could be an indication that something is wrong. And so that's where we actually see opportunity to expand our value beyond just making sure that the building is safe and residents are safe is how can we actually use all of this, quote unquote, data that everyone has, but turn it into something that is actionable and meaningful for the community itself. Yeah, I think that last point when we talk about creating the data points that people can use to monitor are they cooking? Are they getting enough nutrition? I mean, you can start to, like you said, paint that profile. Mm -hmm. That's such an intriguing thing because so many people in our space want data, but they're still trying to figure out what to do with it and understand Absolutely. how to, to best embrace it and, and utilize it. And I think you guys, uh, what you just said makes a lot of sense around, you kind of already have started to understand maybe how this data can be useful and how to help these operators apply it more. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, I mean, there are a lot of remote monitoring systems, right, that people use, fall detection. I mean, mm -hmm. there is so much technology for aging in place, but we've never really applied that to the appliances that we use every day for activities of daily living, right? Even your washer dryer, your dishwasher, your fridge. And so we are, are actually partnering with a large um, appliance manufacturer so that we can start uh, taking that data from other smart appliances that people have. But like you said, we're not really doing anything with that data and aggregating all of it so we can get a much more holistic picture about what's happening, right? So like, you know, is the fridge door being opened? Is my mom doing her laundry, right? We actually also have an occupancy sensor where we can detect motion. So if we haven't detected motion in, you know, six hours or whatever the parameters are, we can send an alert. So it's really looking beyond just the day-to-day -day functions of your major appliances, but using that now as a way to build some pattern recognition, right? And 
and some predictive analytics where we can actually maybe detect something before, you know, a major incident happens and actually, you know, trying to pull in some some physicians and healthcare providers to start piecing that data together, right? Like if, you know, if like, for, for example, if the auto shutoff starts engaging a lot, that could be an early indication of some kind of cognitive decline. Someone is forgetting something as simple as, you know, uh, turning a burner on or off. Yeah. And you kind of led into, I was going to ask you how you thought your technology was going to integrate and you just kind of rolled right into it. Are you finding a lot of people that you're talking to, like healthcare providers and operators of senior living, are are you getting a lot of traction with them and seeing the value in this? Because I hear you telling me the story about like what's going on in the kitchen and with all the kind of the daily appliances. And that's not data points that we're currently looking at, but I could see the immense value in starting to better understand someone's day-to-day kind of what do I do? What's my, my daily, daily day-to-day yeah. life look like? And better understand how to be a better provider and better caregiver for them. And so what kind of traction have you seen with that? Yeah. Technology continues to drive changes in senior care, and that includes food service. E-Menu Choice is an award-winning point-of-service application for managing the dining function in senior living communities. This mobile, touchscreen-enabled software enhances the dining experience for residents while streamlining processes for staff. The flexibility and functionality of eMenu Choice makes it an effective solution for any type of senior living environment, from independent and assisted living to skilled nursing facilities. It works for production kitchens or restaurant-style service with options for per-meal or a la carte pricing and accommodates a variety of payments, including bill-to-account, meal credits, and credit cards. Created by a senior care provider with more than a century of experience serving older adults, eMenu Choice eliminates communication barriers between staff and residents while enabling person-centered choices and greater resident satisfaction. eMenu Choice, transforming dining for senior living. Yeah, it's it's a good question because when I just started cold calling these senior living communities, like I didn't really know what to expect. And what's interesting is that everyone knows that this is a problem, but nobody knows that there is a solution. So there is there is some education that we have to do around how you can actually solve for this, right? Because there's so many other technologies these guys are getting pitched all the time, but it's not something like this. And so there is there is a bit of novelty here that we have to uh, explain. And so for that reason, I think understanding the value and resonating with people, everyone gets, right? We've all had an instance where we left the stove on or someone else did, we burned food. I mean, I think that's the best thing to, that everyone has experienced. But how they can actually build this into their operations. And then like you, we we're talking about extract that data and how they can use it is new. So fortunately, we do have a few communities who are a bit more open to trying new technologies and who have already integrated some other, you know, of the smart technology that's out there that are willing to serve as test beds for us. So we're kind of starting there. Like, let's get some case studies and let's really prove that this is something that actually brings value to you. And that's not just going to sit there. Right. And then we can kind of expand from there. So taking a much more targeted approach about who we're talking to and and then hopefully build out from there. But it's it had been a bit of a challenge. And I, I think everyone would agree that this industry is a bit slower, right, as many major yeah. industries are like you have to get a lot of traction and a lot of people using a product before you want to try it out. So I think we have to uh, work with that too. Yeah. I think your point about like everybody wants to have technology, but then they're not sure what to do with it. And so then it kind of, there's this lull or this gap in wanting and then implementing. It's definitely something that the senior living industry, I think, struggles with quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so what, one of the things I was curious about as I was listening to you kind of talk about like integrating all these smart technologies together I imagine that there was a lot of challenges to overcome as you were developing the smart knob, you know, and I'm one of those that's kind of, I like the backstory of like how the, everything works. And so what are some of those bigger challenges that you, you saw and how did you guys overcome those? 
Oh boy, where do I even, you know, because I don't have a technical background, I've never started a business before. I'm a first time entrepreneur from a different, you know, industry altogether. There was a huge learning curve. I mean, from something as basic as like, how do you manage an engineering team? I have no idea. And there was a lot of trial and error on that fundraising and getting enough capital to not only support the operations of the business, but also like product development, right? So we've got mechanical engineering, industrial design, manufacturing, supply chain, a backend infrastructure, an app. I mean, I did not realize when I started this <laughs> how complex a connected product is. And so yeah. I think I got over that that part by meeting as many people who would meet with me who had done this before. I mean, everyone's journey is different, but, you know, just getting perspective from uh, any founder that would talk to me who has built a physical product or even, you know, a connected solution. And so I think that helped me get over a lot of the initial obstacles. Yeah. But then as we got further into development, I think a challenge for us was, you know, how do we build out larger scale distribution channels? Direct to consumer is very expensive, right? In the long run, you know, advertising costs, you know, customer acquisition costs is it just yeah. gets more and more expensive as you get bigger. And so uh, I think an obstacle last year, and, and to an extent it still is, is how do we partner with the organizations that already have access to our end customer, which is why we're now thinking, okay, developers, builders, senior living communities, multifamily housing, maybe even student housing, you know, what are the other channels that we can leverage so that we're not taking on that burden all ourselves? And then I think probably the final thing would be in terms of product development, just iterating. So your first product is never the one you go to mass market with. It's like, you know, it's like whatever you could put together to at least prove that this is something. So, you know, with Gen 1, we were able to prove that this works. We've never had a stove that where the burners could be controlled like we do here. So we wanted to make sure that this worked and we did that. But there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of optimizations, right? So it's it's a bit bigger. So if you look at stove tops where the knobs are closer together, we don't work on those right now. We can't change the color of this. And so then after we shipped product, you were like, okay, well, if we really want to go to the mass market, we've got to iterate and we have to take all the learnings from from Gen 1 and build a Gen 2. And that was a process in and of itself. I mean, again, engineering, you can engineer forever, but you have right. to you know, as efficiently as possible, you know, build, build your next product. And so we actually just finished Gen 2, which you can see is like a world of difference. Oh, yeah. Right. And but the, it was really challenging because there are a lot of you have to keep in mind, you know, your your cost of goods and, you know, the user experience. And, you know, fortunately, our manufacturer of Gen 2 has a great design team and we were able to leverage that. So I think all in all, to answer your question, all the obstacles that we encountered, I've been fortunate enough to have people much, much smarter than me around the table that could figure out how to get through it with me. And in that process, I've learned a lot too. So. Yeah. And, and I like the the way, I mean, realizing that, you know, that finding those business partners and then how it led you to senior living, because it's kind of where your journey began to begin with was that in the incident with your mother and the stove. And so such a a lot of great lessons there, I think, for anybody, even if you're in something as simple as like managing a kitchen, like just that yeah. understanding to get those right people on the bus and e even with recipes and products, like that, the iterating that you're talking about and being able to find the right solution makes a ton of sense for just about anybody. And so I was curious, kind of, because we come towards our time here, you'd mentioned kind of working with some operators. Do you have any case studies or any? success stories that you can share with us as you're beginning this process? Yeah. So it's not something I can share just yet, but I would love to come back once we build out those case studies and, and some learnings and share that with you. I'd be happy to. Okay. Yeah. No, I think I, I'm really excited to see how this goes for you and see your living because I think the approach again of connecting everything in the kitchen and that's it's kind of like we thought about like how we want to get information from the different appliances, mm -hmm. but then how do we use that information? Like you said earlier, I think it's going to be a huge, huge component, especially as we think about how do we develop not just a, a good routine for seniors, but how do we even look at 
the design of mm -hmm. kitchens that are being built? Do we need to yeah. move things in different places and kind of maybe even reinvent the layout of a senior living apartment because of some mm -hmm. of the things and the data that you're looking to try and gather, I think could really drive some interesting conversations around design and development as we kind of evolve as an industry. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, as we wrap up, um, I'd love for you to share, obviously you're talking about, uh, you've got a Gen 2 uh, unit that's that's out and are getting ready to be available. Uh, but what mm -hmm. other future plans or developments do you guys have that are, are going to be kind of immediate here in the next few months? Yeah, um, I mean, from our side, we have our hands full with the hardware that we do have. So <laughs> we won't be releasing any more hardware ourselves. We uh, Gen 2 will release early next year. But outside of that, where we are really focusing our efforts in development is the integration. So integrating with appliance manufacturers where we can leverage their infrastructure supply chain and, and even integrate this into a new appliance. So when you go and buy a new range, this already comes with it. So that's something that we're working on. Um, but really the big thing in the next few months, Aaron, is uh, our senior living, you know, multifamily platform. And we're really trying to understand uh, what pieces of data are we getting? There's a lot, right? And you yeah. can imagine, I um, think every company that has data probably struggles with all the different data points that, that they have. But what we're really prioritizing is using our relationships with your healthcare providers, with, with senior living communities, operators, family members, caregivers, of understanding which pieces of that data are important to you. And how can we then put that together in a way that is understandable and that is actionable where you can actually do something to help your loved one. So that is really our focus. It's, it's a huge task just because we haven't really done that before. And so, so yeah, I would look out for that and uh, definitely look out for a few more communities that are integrating our technology and uh, hopefully we can uh, expand our use cases beyond that next year. Very great. Very great. How can the listeners connect, learn more about, about the things you have going on as they come out and, and you're, you're putting things out there? What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you or learn more about that? Yeah, so to learn more about the company or to be on our newsletter, you can just go to our website, which is omkitchen.com. So omekitchen.com can also just reach out to me directly. I'm more than happy. I love learning from people, learning, you know, their perspective, but then also, you know, any questions. So you can just email me at akshita at omkitchen.com. We also have a support email, support at omkitchen.com. And then, of course, you can find us on LinkedIn, too. So any one of those ways would be great. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Well, that, I'm fascinated with the the product you have and this smart knob and how it's going to evolve and, and the impact it's going to have on senior living design and, and operations, I think, in the next few years, because I, I see this smart kitchen concept really kind of exploding. So, so Keisha, thank you very much for your time. And well, thanks for joining me on Tips from Trestle. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So there it is, everybody, another one in the books. Thanks again for tuning in. Please follow, like, and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on social media at Tips from Trestle. You can also learn more about the work I do by following me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. And be sure to check out Trestle Hospitality Concepts at www www.dresselhospitalityconcepts.com. I'm your host, Aaron Fish, and this has been another episode of Tips from Dressel.